Hey everybody, happy Wednesday. This is Diane Covington calling from beautiful, believe it or not, today's sunny and gorgeous Northern California. You know, it's the new year and I want to ask you guys, I want you to just take a minute with a piece of paper and I want you to think, you've probably heard of the old Christmas Carol movie, the pa- you know, Ghost of the Past, Ghost of the Present, and Ghost of the Future. But for just a minute, I want you to go back and think just for a minute about 2020. Now, <laughs> I know that there's not been a lot of good stuff out of 2020, but a lot of good stuff did come out of 2020. Many of us had to um, learn to work virtual. Many of us had to grow in our business a different way. Many of us had to kind of learn to do things differently. Unfortunately, we also had some hardships, maybe loss of loved ones, maybe you got sick. I mean, there's just been a lot of stress and stuff going on in our country. But for your business, for a minute, I want you to think about your past last year and <clears throat> What did you learn from last year? What went well? What what did you what were you expecting it to happen that went better than what you expected? And then the next question is what didn't go as well as you had expected? So maybe you anticipated doing more in face parties, you know, more more, you know, going to people's homes and doing faces or bridal parties or whatever. And maybe that didn't go, but instead you did more virtual faces than you've ever done. Whatever. So whatever it is, and then let me ask you What's one habit, one habit that needs to be eliminated that's not serving you? I think a lot of people have gone from occasionally watching TV to now streaming TV, getting addicted to a series and watching like two episodes a night. Well, you do that a couple times a week and you're spending hours in front of a TV. So what's one habit that needs to be eliminated that's not serving you? Is it um not getting any exercise? Is it poor eating habits? Is it not reading or doing any quiet time? So what is that? And then I want to ask you, what's one skill or talent that you might have, not might have, what's one skill or talent that you have but that you aren't at a 10 yet? So let's say let's say you're really good at booking. You meet somebody, you get a name and a number, and almost always you can book them but not always. Like you maybe seven out of ten times can book them for a a makeover or a party or you have a sale or whatever. What's the one thing that you're pretty good at but with a little extra training or a little bit of a tweak, you could go from a seven to a nine and a half? So what would that look like? So jot that down. So that's a lot of the stuff about past. Um, Past and then, of course, present is what I just described is what is it that you're good at? What could you tweak? What What habits do you need to get rid of? And um, for the present, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? And remember, you're always going to have some things that you're really good at and other things that you're not. I've seen siblings that are complete opposites, one super detailed. I look at my two kids. One is they're just completely different personalities. One rejuvenates her batteries by being alone. My son, he thrives on being around other people. And I'm sitting here thinking, wow, they're from the same gene pool. (laughs) How can they be so different? And that's just the way God's wired them to be so different. So what are your strengths? It could be physical strengths. It could be your bilingual. It could be you're well plugged into your community. It could be your faith. It could be you have a supportive family. It could be you love the product. It could be you love the culture of Mary Kay, being your own boss, freedom of flexibility, all of those things. What are your weaknesses? Might be lack of focus, determination, procrastination, poor time management, poor money management. Uh, I don't know. There's lots of things you could be weaknesses. And just because you're weak at it doesn't mean that you can't strengthen it. But here's my, here my heart. A lot of Harvard studies and mind um, philosophy and psychology studies have been done. If you're a three or a four at something, let's just say it's math. Let's say math is just not your gig. <laughs> you can study math really, really, really hard and get tutors and get all of this stuff, and you are never going to probably be. The amount of energy it would take for you to go from a three to four in math to a nine is just like, oh. But if you're already like an eight in reading and you're a great reader, great reading comprehension, you love to read, with just a few little tweaks, you could be a nine and a half or a ten at reading. So just look at what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses. So we kind of got the past and the present taken care of. Let's talk for a second right now about your future. I want to give you guys a challenge to do something maybe a little different than you did before, and there's many versions of this. It's called the 12-week year. And I'm not trying to encourage you to have to, you know, get the book and read the whole book and, you know, spend three weeks out of your life to analyze all this. So let me just kind of give you an example. 
what it does is it talks about why often year-long goals don't work because we don't course correct. We don't reevaluate our goals every 12 weeks or every three months and say, <clears throat> where am I going? What was my benchmark? Am I getting closer? And course correct. By course correct, I mean if you were on a cruise ship and you left San Diego Harbor in Southern California and then you were headed toward Alaska, they already have charts mapped out of how fast the boat will go and exactly where to turn, exactly what to do. And I guarantee you every hour, every minute, they're looking at where they are versus where they're supposed to be because they can't predict wind. They can't predict the current of the, of the waters. They can't predict maybe ripples from other ships. I mean, all of those things play into it. So if that ship, when it leaved, when it left San Diego Harbor, if it didn't course correct, I guarantee you, if it just said its thing and said, okay, I'm going for five days straight or however many days it takes to get to Alaska. Let's just say it's five days. I don't think it's that long. And if they never course corrected, I guarantee you they won't end up at their port. They will, they will miss their port every single time. So the importance of course correcting is to evaluate. So let me give you an example. <clears throat> when you do the 12-week plan, they suggest, the trainers that are famous for this, and there's actually a book about it, they suggest that you take three specific goals. Now, they might be one Mary Kay, one personal, and one fitness. It might be um, two Mary Kay, like one sales and one team building and one your health. Whatever it is, find three specific goals that you want to work on. These are ones that you're going to have laser focus and attention on. Remember, Mary Kay used to tell us, what you focus on gets bigger. Attract number grows. So let's just say one, I'm just going to throw some out. Let's just say <clears throat> your Mary Kay business is one. Let's say your physical health is one. Let's say your mental health is another one or your romance. Let's say your love life. So we've got your love life, your health, and your Mary Kay. So let's look at those and I'll let you deal with your love life and your health, but let's talk about your Mary Kay. What is it that you'd want to do in 12 weeks? Okay, so we're talking January, February, end of March. So by the end of March, let's say you're a senior consultant right now. It's a team of one. And you go, you know what? I want it all. And if it's virtual right now and I can build faster and stronger and better because everyone can be watching me on Zoom on my team and I can be reaching more people, I want to be an elite team leader by the end of March. Okay, well, an elite team leader is eight, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> um, and a senior consultant is one, so we are nine team members away. So you might look at that and say, okay, let's break it down. So the goal would be to add three in January, three in February, and three in March. Right? That would give you nine. That way, if one's not active, then no big deal. So it would be okay. So if I wanted to add three team members in January, what would the activity? So underneath the big goal that says get to elite team leader, it's going to say, okay, so break it down. What, what activities? And would it be a daily activity? Would it be a weekly activity? Or, and when would you do it? So it might be, well, daily, I want to reach out to five prospects a day. Anybody I'd want on my team, book them for a facial or have them share, hear about the opportunity. So would you do that every day or is that a three times a week? And so what happens is at the end of the three months or the 12 weeks, you look at where was I three months ago or 12 weeks ago, where am I now, am I closer to my goal? So let's say by the end of the three months, you're a red jacket. Okay, well, that's good, but if the goal was to get to <clears throat> eight and we're at three, then we have to go back and say, okay, so let's course correct this. What did I not do enough of? Did I not do enough new faces? I didn't have enough people hear the career opportunity, so I have control over that. So does this make sense? It makes it really, really powerful because what happens is twice a year we set new goals, usually at seminar, July 1, and then sometimes January 1. So we kind of get two New Year's in Mary Kay. But if we don't look at where we're going and hold ourselves accountable, we're going to miss the goal every time. And so I want to close with one thought. <clears throat> I want to close with the thought of you can do everything you want when your why is strong enough. Now I hear people all of a sudden talking about, well, you've got to know what your why is. And I thought, well, what is my why? When my kids were smaller, my why was to keep them in private school. Well, here's what I noticed. The year my son graduated from college, all of a sudden, I'm not kidding, I went for about three months in a, in a fog of euphoria because I was used to paying $4,000 a month in college tuition in addition to running my business, in addition to my household business bills or, you know, expenses I had that I contributed to our mortgage and stuff. So my paycheck had to be eight, nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a month to just cover my obligation to my kids and my family. 
So when that bill went away, all of a sudden I was like, well, now I can, like, have a party if I want to, and if I don't want to, I don't have to. And all of a sudden I went, well, well, wait a second. You need to go find a new why because that's not working. (laughs) So I had to find a new reason, a new reason to get up and do parties. On on days maybe if I didn't want to get up, I kept thinking about where, what's my dream? What do I want to do? What kind of a business do I want to build? What kind of an impact do I make? Who can I inspire or encourage? So having a why is really important. So figure out what your why is. There's a lot of fun things you can find online on how to how to determine your why. There's even some good Mary Kay YouTube videos on it. Or ask your director to help you walk you through that. But don't spend too much time going through the past of what you did wrong last year or what didn't go right. But let's focus on last year, <clears throat> Where are you right now? And most importantly, where do you want to go in 2021? Break it down to what can I, what am I absolutely determined to cross the finish line with in 12 weeks? Where do I want to be by the end of March? I hope you guys have found this helpful. There's a lot of great tips and tools like this out there. And don't, don't spend too much time planning. Yes, you want to take a couple hours and get away from your phone and get away from people and anything that could distract you and just really listen to your heart. Listen to the dreams and goals that God put in your heart and your head and then map it out. And if you need help, if there's nothing wrong with reaching out for help, absolutely nothing. You guys, thank you so much for calling in. Have an amazing, amazing day. Bye.